Good afternoon. Welcome to the third outstanding paper session. And our first talk will be uh, abstractive document summarization with a graph-based attentional neural model. The presenter is Ji Wei Tan from PKU. Uh, by the way, for the audience who wants to ask question, please come to the microphone because you are going to do video, video taping, okay? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ji Wei Tan from Peking University. Glad to present our work, Abstractive Document Summarization with a Graph-Based Attentional Neural Model. This work is done with Professor Xiaojun Wan and Jian Guoxiao. The task of document summarization is to produce a summary for a given document. It usually contains the components for content selection to select the salient content and the surface realization to produce the summary. The study of document summarization is used to more focused on extracting methods that extract original sentences to form the summary. Extractive methods are able to keep the salient content and provide fluent sentences, but also face the drawbacks of incoherent discourse and redundant information. Relatively, abstractive methods aim to generate the summary using arbitrary words, and ideally it is able to produce concise, coherent, fluent, and scalable summary, and is the ultimate goal of document summarization research. However, abstractive methods are uh, previously less, in, less studied because natural language generation is really always difficult. Recently, sequence to sequence models provide an effective way for natural language generation, and it is natural to consider applying sequence to sequence, to sequence models to the document summarization task. Success has been achieved on the sentence summarization task, which generates the news headlines from the first sentences of news articles. This is quite similar to the neural machine translation task, and it is also intuitive to consider extending sentence summarization to document summarization by replacing the input into the document and the output into the summary. However, there are still some problems uh, for this extension that we may need to truncate the input document into the first several words because a document may be so long to exceed the ability of sequence to sequence models to precise. And the results are not satisfactory and usually fail to outperform the lead baseline. There are two key points left to be considered. And the first is whether sequence to sequence models learn to summarize the salient information. And the second is whether the generated outputs meet the qualifications of summary. So the motivation of this work is to teach sequence to sequence model to identify salient information from massive input content. We achieve this by proposing a graph-based attention mechanism to attend to important original sentences. And we also hope to make the decoder generate qualified summaries. And we achieve this by an improved decoding algorithm to meet the qualifications of summary. We adopt a hierarchical encoder decoder framework that uses a word encoder to encode each sentence into sentence embeddings, and a sentence encoder to encode sentence embeddings into a document embedding. And for generation, a sentence decoder is used to produce sentence embeddings, and a word decoder is used to generate every sentence. Traditional attention mechanism used in a hierarchical framework is to attend to original sentences that are relevant to the decoding sentence. So the attention score of a sentence 
is, is, is based, based on the relationship between the original sentence and the decoding sentence. Instead, in our graph-based attention mechanism, we hope to attend to original sentences that are both relevant and salient. So we achieve this by replacing the traditional attention function into a graph-ranking graph model. And the score of an original sentence is computed based on not only the relationship between the original sentence with the decoding sentence, but also the relationship with other original sentences to identify whether it is salient. And we realize this by introducing topic sensitive page rank. And the decoding sentence is treated as the topic. So the attention score of an original sentence is computed based on ranking value regarding to the decoding sentence. There are also several implementation issues in the graph-based attention mechanism that the iteration form of page rank is not applicable in neural networks. So we solve this by using the closed form instead that can work in the backpropagation, and this is our topic-sensitive page rank function. We further integrate it with a distraction mechanism for non-redundancy, and here comes our final graph-based attention function. And here is a visualization example, and uh, we can see that our graph-based attention is more focused on some important sentences and ignores the less important ones. And uh, a concrete example to compare the traditional attention mechanism and the graph-based attention mechanism. When generating the first and the second output, both the attention mechanisms will attend to the same sentences. But uh, the difference comes when, atten when generating the third output, that traditional attention will attend to the consequent sentence while our graph-based attention ignores it and uh, attends to a far away sentence, which seems more important to a summary. Generally, traditional attention function tends to attend to the first sentences of a document, and our graph-based attention tends to attend to important sentences. There are also several problems in the decoding that some frequent expressions are usually repeated, and there are also information incorrectness, and this is a more serious problem to a uh, summarization. So we solve this by proposing a reference mechanism in the decoding, and the basic idea is that the generated information should be consistent and uh, refer to the original document. So we realize this by we realize this by the idea that a new word to be generated should improve the background overlap between the summary and uh, the original document. So we realize this by adding a reference reference term to the proper probability of the word by the decoder. And the reference term models the word's contribution to the background overlap. There are several benefits for the reference mechanism that makes the summary more consistent with original document. So this is the requirement of correctness and also reduces the repetition, so this is non-redundancy, and uh, also enables a hierarchical beam search algorithm, so better for coherence. Hierarchical beam search is realized by referring to different original sentences, so we can get diverse candidate sentences, while traditional beam search will usually generate similar, very similar candidate sentences. 
So this is the effect of reference mechanism, and we can see that it, it can bring huge improvement to the basic decoding algorithm. And here is the example, and we can find that the generated summary is also better than the baseline generation, and why is the repetition and the information incorrectness. Conduct experiments on CNN and the Daily Mail corpora, and results on, and the experimental results show that our method is able to outperform various extractive baselines, including lead and uh, neural obstructive method, and also outperform neural is, is obstructive baselines and neural extractive methods, and also another neural obstructive method. So uh, ablation examples also verify that the, the graph-based attention mechanism and the hierarchical beam search are effective. That without the attention mechanism, the root one score will decrease at about one point. And the human evaluation. Human evaluation shows that our method is able to produce better information and consistency, and also good at coherence and fluence. So in conclusion, in this paper, we propose, we address the properties of obstructive summarization by proposing a graph-based attention mechanism to address the salient information and the non-redundancy, and a decoding algorithm with a reference mechanism to for better correctness, non-redundancy, and coherence. Some future work can be generating a scalable summary and uh, adding word level attention and uh, investigating using less training data. So thanks for your attention. Plenty of time for questions, so please come to the microphone if anyone has a question. Hi, thank you so much for a great talk. So Hi. I would like to ask a quick, quick question for clarification. So in the graph-based attention, uh, how did you construct your graph? So did, did you consider you know, cosine similarity between sentences to construct edges? Or, and also, like, did you do that, the, the graph construction in the pre-processing process? Well, I'm sorry, can you repeat what, uh, consider what? Uh, so in the graph-based attention, uh, how did you construct uh, the graph? Did you consider cosine similarity or between two sentences? Oh, or yes. How did you do that? Yes. So as we have the, sorry. As we have the, the embedding of every sentence, so the construction of the graph is by defining the function, f, the, the function, the edge of between every two sentences. So the edge definition can be used like uh, using dot similarity, cosine similarity, or feed forward net neural network. So we use a, a feed forward net neural network to define the function f. This is the edge of the graph. OK, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, you said that you use the principle that a new word to be generated should improve the bigram overlap between the summary and the original document. And you do this to try to deal with uh, the problems of repeating yourself or uh, copying facts wrong. So my question is, um, mightn't that encourage the system to just copy a lot from this uh, original document, and how much do you see that happening? Yes, I also say that uh, it will copy quite, uh, but I, I think it's, it will be about half and half, so there are uh, quite several copies, and there are also several new generated uh, content. So when you say half and half, is that about 50% of words or 50% of sentences? What are you quantifying there? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so about how much of the time do you see it paraphrasing? Like, for example, do you see any uh, paraphrasing of the original content, or is it uh, mostly copying? Oh, I'm sorry. We just uh, didn't do this uh, statistic, but we just, uh, I, I just uh, went through some generated summaries, and I found 
uh, the copy is not so so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We have a couple minutes, so let me ask a question about the future work. Uh, to what extent can this framework be extended to other languages? As I, I know you need uh, things like uh, OV detection, attitude recognition, right? Can you have some comments on that? Yeah. Uh, in my experiments, I also tried with uh, Chinese languages, and the, the results seems also good and even better than that on English. Uh, this is due to the data, different data set. But I think uh, this method is able to apply to different languages because there is no, uh, no technique that uh, regards to any specific language. And the out of vocabulary is also, can also be dealt in using traditional techniques. So and uh, the uh, all the other techniques, I think, will will scalable to other languages. Thank you.